In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own custom accordion interaction in Adobe Captivate. Okay, so this video is specifically for Captivate 12, the all new Adobe Captivate. But remember, of course, that in classic and earlier, I did a lot of videos where I taught people how to build their own custom interactions using variables and advanced actions. And so inspired by that, I decided that I was going to try and do something similar to the click to reveal type interaction that I've done in the past, but with, of course, the all new Adobe Captivate. In this case, we're going to do an accordion interaction where the idea is, is that you click these bars or title areas and it collapses or expands and reveals more information for you. Let me show you what I did. Okay, so I've built this slide out of a, a series of text blocks in Adobe Captivate. The first one here contains a title. The next one after that, I've just got body text, which I've edited to change its appearance a little bit. Same thing with the bulleted text below here. It's all just body text, but they're all separate content blocks. So that makes it very easy to set something like this up. The other thing I have down here is a button block where I have two buttons and the buttons are distributed uniformly across the slide here. Let's set this up uh, so that we get our initial view here. First thing I want to do is I want to add an additional state for each of the accordion items. And we're just going to go into the visual properties inspector and click on add and we'll call this clicked and the only thing i'm going to change is the bullet from this little arrow guy to a little minus symbol just to, so that it looks different like maybe this is what you click to collapse this or what have you and i'm going to do something similar for each one of these as well so we'll add a clicked state and again we'll change our bullet to that minus symbol and we'll do the last one here as well. Let's add a state to that, clicked, and we'll just switch that to minus here. You could go back to the default state. It's just sometimes a little disconcerting to leave it on that clicked state here. Now, when I first arrive on this slide, I don't want to see these content blocks here. This one here, so I'm going to select the hide during publish option right here. You'll see that little computer monitor with an eyeball and when you click on it a slash appears and then it becomes a show during publish button if I press it again but I'm not going to do that I'm going to select the next content block I want to hide and then the final one down here hide and last but not least I'm going to hide the next button because I don't want to show the next button until our learners have clicked on all three of these accordion items here so let's just select that and make sure that's not presently visible in output. We can test this out. We can just do a little preview and make sure that it shows up initially as we saw it before. So we've got our title and our three accordion items here and our next button is hidden. So that's perfect. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select just the text item from this first block here and we're going to move into the interactions icon next to the properties inspector and we're going to click on add an interaction so the trigger for this interaction will be clicking on this item so we'll select that now you'll notice that this generates a hover a visited a selected even a disabled state here I'm just going to disable all of these because I really don't want the appearance of these accordions to change when I roll over them. So our action for this will be a bunch of actions and that's why this would be an advanced interaction. So a couple things we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set the state of accordion one to clicked. And this reminds me that it's a good thing to label your object. So it's really easy. 
However, Captivate 12 is much better than previous versions of Captivate in that you can very visually select what object you're working with here. So I'm going to click Done there. We're going to add another action where we're going to set the state of Accordion 2 to default and click Done and set the state of Accordion 3 to default as well. And we'll click Next and then done. Okay. The next thing we want to do is something similar with our content one, content two, and content three. That's what I've labeled these blocks. Now we're not showing or hiding the body text or anything like that. We're, we're going to show or hide the entire block which will actually create the additional space needed for an accordion. It works out quite nicely for that. So let's click on add new action and we will show our content section and we're specifically looking for content one. Click next and done. And we'll also add a hide function that will hide content two, the block for this stuff over here, and content three. You don't have to put these on separate actions. They can kind of be one action there. And we'll click next and then done. So that's kind of it. We're doing, we're doing basically, we're showing our click state, but returning the other two to their default state. And we're showing this block, but hiding the other two. You could do other things here, like you could stop playing any kind of triggered audio. You could also play some audio that corresponds with that. And that's what makes this a, probably a little bit more versatile than the widgets. Because of course, widgets, they work one way. And if you want them to do something different, they just don't give you those options. So building something custom like this can be a lot more versatile. Now, one of the things that we're going to do, we could actually do this. It might save us some time, but I'll show you a neat trick that's available in Captivate 12. I can right click on this and copy the interaction I've just created and then select the next object and paste those interactions in here. So I'm just going to disable all the extra button states that you typically have with this. And there's our custom is already in here. We're for clicked. So we'll change a few of these items here. This gives you a nice guide. If nothing else, you still have to make some modifications to all of these lines, but it's probably a little bit easier when you see what you've done before and just modify it accordingly. So I'm going to double click on the first one here and we're going to set the state for instead of accordion one, now accordion two to clicked, next, and then done. And for the second line here, we will set state for accordion one to back to default, next, and then done. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. This will stay the same because accordion three is still accordion three here. Now we're going to, instead of showing content one, we're actually going to change this to content two. So I will select content two and deselect content one and click next and then done. And then we'll change this last one to work with two different targets. In this case here, I'll unselect content two and select content one. Click next and click done. So we can again save ourselves some time by copying the interactions, selecting our last accordion item here and pasting those interactions in. So we just need to make some modifications to this action here. So we will set the state for accordion three to be clicked next and done. And we will set the state for accordion one. In fact, that stays the same. And in this case here, we'll change this one to accordion two to default state and then done. So that takes care of our first there. So we're going to change number three to clicked and one and two will return back to their default state. We're going to show a different content item. 
So we can edit the target here. Content sections will unselect content two and select content three, because that's what we want to show. Next, and then done. And then lastly, we will hide. In this case, it will be one and two. So we'll just make some small changes there. And instead of one and three, we'll make this one and two. Next, and then done. And that's pretty much good to go. The last thing I'm going to do is a slide level interaction. So I'm just going to click in the scrap area up here. And under slide interactions, there's a plus icon to add an interaction for the entire slide. And what we're going to say is once all three of these objects are clicked, we will show the next button. So let's select objects clicked as our trigger, and we will choose accordion one, accordion two, and accordion three, and then click next. And then we will show our button 23, which I should have given a proper label, but selecting it's easy enough because it's very obvious that's my next button. And I'm not gonna add any delayed effects or anything like that. We'll click done. And I think we're good to test this out. One thing, of course, let's just set an action to go to next slide. And in this case here, we will go to the previous slide and then click done. So I think we're good to test this, this out. Let's see how it works. Let's preview. So I'm going to click the first one. There we see the information there. We'll click the second one. It collapses the first and then shows us the second and then click the last one here. And then our next button is available. I think I forgot to get rid of the rollover effects here. Let's open up that. Those are disabled. Those are disabled. Oh, I forgot to disable number three there. So make sure you disable those so that they don't show up. I think it makes a difference here. Let's just preview it again. Make sure it's all good. That's kind of cool. And then, of course, now our learners can continue with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.